Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, I want to revisit the Lunar Lander script that Dimitri created, because I'm just having a lot of fun with it. But before, before we jump into that flight though, I want to draw your attention to the configuration file. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here so you can see it better. So if you go into your Orbiter directory and then go into script backslash Lunar Lander, there's a configuration file in there called llconfig.txt. And if you open that up, you're going to see five different difficulty settings. Uh, the the the, uh, the default setting is normal, and that gives us so the each flight calculates an optimal amount of dV that could possibly be used to complete the flight. You know, if absolutely everything went perfect. So in the normal setting, we have two times the amount of dV that we need. And since I've had a couple of successes now in the normal setting, I'm going to dial up the difficulty a little bit and see if I can still complete the flight fingers crossed. So the way I'm going to do that is just go down here to the difficulty setting and change it to three. Um, and if it's, uh, if you're just getting started, you could even go down to uh, one, which is the easiest setting, which gives you uh, three times the amount of Delta V that you would need under optimal conditions. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that, close it out, start orbiter and launch the script, start the orbiter launch pad and then launch the script. Okay, uh, I guess I can also say once again, if you haven't really gone through this yet and you're interested in doing this, um, you may not want to watch me do it. That way you can go into it sort of like blind without any previous knowledge and uh, give it a try for yourself. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to retry my last flight because I succeeded in that flight, I had some DV left over. So we're going to try it again and see if we can beat our score. So the last score was 60%, something like that. Let's see if we can get up to like, I don't know, 65 or something. Okay, so it's just going to uh, set up our flight for us. And let's do instant sunlight. All right, there we go. Now, once again, I'm going to head and so I'm going to switch over to the 2D panel. And I've already gone through, you know, my thought process in the previous videos. So I won't go into as much detail here. Uh, once again, just opening those retro doors to have them available to me. And let me think about this for a second. I can't remember what the DV was before, but now it's 4,027. All right, let's uh, power up this side. And also let me switch cameras to the other side because I just remembered that that's information's over there on the right. Okay, so again, we're at 280 and we need to be 321. Um, so let's bring up burn time calculator, switch over to the hover engines. And I think last time we did uh, 40, maybe let's try 35 this time. That just gives me the initial push up into the air. Well, air on the moon. All right, I think that's all we need. So all right, let's fly. So we need, we need to go to 321 and we are in rotation. 20. Okay. About right there. Full power on the main. And last time I remember thinking that I had way too much altitude. So let me try to not pitch up so steeply this time. Not sure if that's really going to make a difference. Let me track my location, zoom in a couple times, zoom in once, untrack, zoom in again. I'm going to move the map over closer to the target so I can see it better. So that when that green line starts to get over to the target, um, you know, I can have a better idea of when to, uh, when to cancel my main engine. All right, now let me go level. We should have all the vertical acceleration we need. All right now, I want to keep an eye because once that green line starts to come over to the target, it's going to reach it really fast. So I'm actually zoom out for now. And that's just the method that I've been using to in, to know, you know, when I can kill my main engine. Okay, a little bit more. And yeah, once again, I think I think I did really well getting that uh, getting that dialed in. 
<clears throat> in previous flights, sometimes my initial bearing is off by quite a bit, and I end up with the green line up here or down here, so it's off by, you know, dozens of kilometers. All right, now, let me think. What do we want to do next? So, let's bring up... So let's bring up Pursuit MFD, because this is the MFD I've been using to help me really fine-tune that uh, X position. And we're going to go to uh, Relative, Target, and the name of the target is Target. And yeah, currently we're only off by 600 meters, 700 meters, and it's coming down in our favor. So that was pretty well spot on right there. Although the fact that it's coming down and we still have that far to go tells me it's going to be a bit off. Probably anyway. All right, let's let's see. Let's go ahead and since that's really close, let's go ahead and warp time forward. Get over to uh, I don't know 750 kilometers, and we'll see where we stand. About right here, somewhere in this range. Okay, so now we're off by over a kilometer, and it's uh, tending to get worse. So. Hmm. I wonder what is the best way to correct this. I still haven't quite picked a good method for that. One thing I've been doing is going into the prograde position. So I'll try that. Just a bit of time warp to speed that up. And then when you're in the prograde position, your X and Y switch. So now I'm looking at the Y. And let me turn off the prograde autopilot. So it's holding pretty well, but it is it is getting slightly worse as we go forward. So let me go to translation. translation. And it looks to me, so let me zoom in on map MFD. And if this is anything to go by, which I'm not sure that it is, let me zoom in one more time for maximum zoom. So if that's anything to go by, it looks like I'm coming in south of the base. And I'm currently headed west, so let me think about this. So I think I need to translate down. Let's find out. So let me put in a bit of translation from the top of the vessel. And eh, of course I'm wrong. I always get it wrong. I should just pick whatever I think is right and then do the opposite. And I'll always be right. <laughs> so that being the case, I'm going to put in just a little bit of hover. Just a tiny bit. And the reason I'm using hover is because I'm in this orientation, so by using hover, I'm thrusting the vessel up. And now you can see that my my Y is uh, getting is getting better as we go forward. So we're about 500 kilometers out. I don't want to put in a ton of uh, additional hover in that direction because um, then I you know everything I put in I have to take out. So let's see. Let me put in just one more tick of hover, and that's it. That's all we're going to do. Okay. So now let's bring up burn time calculator, and if we're going to use the main engines, which I think we probably want to use. Oh, man, I have our shot. Again. Stop. Okay, got it. If we're going to use the main engines to eliminate our velocity, which is probably more efficient, let's put in the current velocity we have, which is 1595 we would need 47 and a half kilometers. So let's plan on doing that. So let's get into the uh, retrograde position. A little bit of time warp to speed that up. Come out of time warp. All right, now just give that a moment to settle. Okay, so again, looking at my Y, it's uh, holding right now at one kilometer off and now it's starting to go up. So let me take a quick look at map at MFD again. So I'm gonna guess that I need just maybe one more touch of hover to send it back in the right direction. Oh my gosh, that's way too much. Alright, so now I'm gonna translate in the opposite direction to oh that's rotation. Oh no, it's actually, it was translation, it's just I have the autopilot on. Let 
Let me actually see. I'm just trying to slow that down a little bit so it's not changing so fast. Okay, uh, I've lost track. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or not at the moment, but I'm going to say that's probably okay. Um, all right, we need to get ready to use the full power of the main engines to do our braking burn, so I can't look at that anymore. Burn time, we said 1595. We're really close. We need 47 and a half kilometers. So retrograde position, now retrograde off, now rotation. And we're going to go wings level with the ground. Okay. And, okay. So, again, about 47 and a half kilometers, so we still have a little bit of time left. Let me bring up one of my cameras. And I'll probably need my back camera. Okay. Let me turn off the HUD. What did I just do? All I did was shut off the HUD. I heard something open or close. I don't know. I'm confused. What is that? I don't know. Control H is just supposed to be the HUD. Oh, I know what it is. Um, there's an animation for the HUD now. There didn't used to be, so that's why that's confusing me. Anyway, 47 and a half kilometers, and we're at that number so it's coming down really fast so we're almost there getting ready to engage the full power of the main engines right now all right now we really need to keep a watch on our altitude wowzers hold altitude vertical speed at you are clear to land. zero 2500 That caught me off guard. All right, so we'll, um, I'm gonna keep the vertical speed around that so that if I get into an emergency situation, I can quickly click hold. For now, I'm gonna turn it off, get rid of the hover. Okay, so actually, I need to think. So I don't think I started the burn soon enough. We're one point something kilometers out. Um, yeah, I didn't start the burn soon enough. We, we're overshooting. All right, I need a different camera angle now. I need my down cam. There it was. Okay, there's the target right there. If I zoom in, I can probably see it right there. Okay, so we're slowly moving in that direction. Let's uh, make sure. Let's make sure we're level. I think one problem there might have been that I wasn't perfectly level, but luckily we are moving in the right direction. All right, let's translate towards the direction we need to go. Let me turn, we still have a bit to fall, so let me get rid of that so we can save that fuel. And... All right, so we're moving in the direction we need to be moving in. Okay, just a little bit more to go. I'm not actually sure what all my velocities are at the moment. That's one thing I can use Pursuit MFD for to give me my relative velocities. Um, I need to hold my altitude though for a second. Uh, target, target, and that's not what I wanted. I meant to get this one in target, target. Okay, so clearly we're, our forward needs to be nulled out a little bit. And then, I should have started that sooner.
Okay, all right, let me get rid of the hold. We are quickly running out of gas. <laughs> All right, let me zoom in a bit. All right, we're starting to move back in that direction, so we don't need any more lateral translation. Okay. And our forward backwards is fine, so now I just wanna make sure that my forward backwards is a bit about zero. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. 1, and how fast are we falling? Quite fast. 500, 400, 300, 200, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, smoother flight than the last one even though I still overshot and let's zoom all the way out let me put in some more hold though okay well we made it all right 71.34 I think that's the best I've done uh, on these you know purely manual flights that's that's a pretty good result I'm happy with that so let me go ahead and switch camera views here. That's going to wrap it up for for this uh, suborbital lunar hop. So something I'm interested in doing is taking these hops that I'm doing and I'm going to give you guys the coordinates. So like I'll put it in the description and then you guys can run the same hop that I'm doing and basically see if you can beat me. I'm sure, you know, several of you will have no problem doing that. But... Um, uh, but yeah, I think that'll be interesting. So what I'll what I'll try to do for this video Or if not this one, then maybe the next one Is um, Yeah, I'll put in I'll, I'll put into the, the description uh, The flight that I'm making and then I'll have to like explain how it is that you can take the same flight and put it into yours because when you bring up the scenario <clears throat> there's no option to you know type in your starting and ending you know you're starting in uh, target that you can't do that you have to actually edit one of the uh, txt files to do it it's easy so actually i probably won't do that for this video um so maybe in the next flight i'll start off the video by explaining you know hey go into your orbiter uh scripts lunar lander put in these numbers and see if you can you know beat my flight type of thing anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, I, let me know. Let me know if you're checking out this uh, this lunar lander script, and I will see you in the next video.